total depravity tells us that man is in his sin, that everything within him is depraved, depraved to the point where it has no desire, no, no desire to, to seek after, after God, that every part of man and his mind and his will and his emotions, that they are fallen, we are dead. A man kind of sick, falling, inebriated by depravity, suffering fully from his effects and his totality. A single man in history, you hasn't been a casualty. To see the man is miserably journey like it's a track to be. Morally bankrupt, our conscience is in recession. God's law is on our heart, but like consciousness in subjection. To the bloodthirsty cries of our mind, screaming, crucify. Trying to murder God, if you deny it, only use a lie. Terminally ill, our fatal doom is setting. It's like we was born still, and we came out the womb. It's effects are inescapable the second you breathe And its origin is traceable to Genesis 3 The word totally doesn't mean that we're as evil as we could be But without the presence of the restraint I believe we would be We've all gone astray, seeking pleasure through evil means Everyone in rebellion against this deity, yeah And then we leisurely, front like we seek and leave A bunch of heretical hypocrites who need the guillotine Contaminated, our understanding and intentions And denial of depravity's evidence of infection Every particle and atom held captive by futility for the transgression of Adam. Hard to fathom, but the state of death, it ain't a facade. The fact of the matter is natural man hates God. It's God. It's not based on anything that we have done. He didn't, he didn't look into the future and knowing that we would choose him, therefore he chose us. No, unconditional election means that God chose us based on no good in us, based upon his own good pleasure and will. I know a lot of people cry to God on 9-11, but was it to the God you find in Romans 9-11? Some even not. go so far as to curse their king, cause their minds are spies in line you find in verse 13. So yo, I don't flow to start trouble or something, but I gotta let you know elections double or nothing. Yet sick fiends ignore that, this king's adored, have y'all heard of Proverbs 16 and 4? Let me give it to you straight, ain't a bait a great debate, cause some desecrate Romans 8, 28, where's the war zone? Before known, I hope that you're shown that the yeah. Lord hasn't chosen supposed nah. more prone. Cause the Lord is short sublime, and an eye doesn't ratify. Nah. No explore your prime down the corridors of time. Yeah, so next. don't ignore the scriptures that underscore the rhymes like Ephesians chapter 1, verses 4, yeah. 5, and 9. When the world is foolish, faithless, heartless, and ruthless, the Lord is hope that goes before and knows in whom he chooses. The foreseen faith, yeah. no, that's not the forno, cause that's not delivery. Yo, that's the journal. The purpose first respected. When the worthless were elected Like up. atonement in the calling This is perfectly effective So all those he chose Come convicted with contrition So it's best to keep it scriptural Elections unconditional Sheep Limited atonement says that The cross that When Jesus Christ hung on the cross That it meant something That it counted It means that Christ died on the cross for his people. It accomplished, it accomplished what Jesus yeah. had set out to do. His death was imminent through a certain root of evil to a certain group of people, its effects were limited. God at the time and space to act in the place and actually save men trapped in the grave. Not enable the believing ones to save themselves. He's the physician who's efficient, who made men well. Only for some did he come. When the sun really hung, he would save them from the gun. Matthew 121. Titus 2.14, spin that back, see why the way gave himself like a gift wrap map. But some say he died so that all could receive, which is why he then extends the call to believe. The son Jesus died to make faith possible, they think that's logical, but we reply. Was so saved at the cross and Calvary pass, or does Jesus then atone only after we ask? 2,000 years ago, dad's wrath, Christ finished it, securing for his people salvation and all its benefits. No, this not the end of it, this applies to life and Rome. Romans 6, Paul said we died with Christ, it defines your fight against Satan's foolish schemes, see who he helps in Hebrews 2.16, though some wrestle this explanation, I'm set in his declaration, man's desolate defamation, he's definite expiation.
once we were in bondage to sin, God changed our hearts, turned our affections so that we run and we run to Jesus. The problem is in Romans 8.30 says we're justified and glorified in the same sentence. I use the golden chain to defend this. How do you explain the word glorified in its present tense when discussing future glory? Does it make sense? Or even the words of Jesus when he said that it is finished. It is finished. That was a broadcast to every one of his accomplishments in light of all of that resisting God sounds like nonsense. In a real sense, you'd have to stop the crucifixion. Hop in the time machine and then remove it from affliction. Cause the word of God declares that we die on the cross with him. With no mention of resistance, that's a blatant contradiction. I hear a lot of brothers throwing out John 12, 32. Okay. Sounds like an argument. Now what do we do? Does he really draw all men into himself and let them choose? Or is his call really powerful enough to never lose? Power. This is just an issue of semantics, my friends. Yeah. In his usual context, it means all kinds of men. That's just bad. Let's compare verse to verse, go back to John 6, 37, verse If Jesus really meant all men, then all men would be saved Because he said that they would all come So then how come all men are in all saved? Come on, man, you gotta see where I'm coming from We know that in this life, we are still going to, to deal with sin And so when, when sin seeks to, to say that you're not going to make it, but your sin is too great. God says, no, I'm, I'm bringing you home. I began this work. We were totally depraved or unable to choose it. So now that we're saved, are we able to lose it? No further hesitation, we needed an explanation. We can lose our salvation, let's look at the implications. The father couldn't finish what he began, and the son let his sheep get plucked from his hand. Plus the son caught the sheep, and he was able to save him, but unable to keep all that the father gave him. The objections are coming, I'm knowing what y'all are say. What about those who supposedly fall away? Doctrinally, I don't know where you might lean, but I advise we first John 2:19. If you thinking the sun's great, you fixing the law. This first Corinthians 1:8, Philippians 1:6. Then he'll make all men kneel. Gotta fear it, cause we sin still, but we've been sealed by the Spirit. So we don't fear, cause it's heaven where we'll be, and we won't hear Matthew 7:23. They say God can't keep His own for His due glory. They're relying on Jeremiah 32:40. And he knows the pain and affliction But in Romans 8 it mentions the golden chain of redemption Keep on running like Hebrews 12.1 And at the second coming you gon' hear well done